Right, last week, the firm and other things that might be war. You will see if they are. Last week, we t- talked about demand and supply, the price mechanism, and the market and its own. Now, if we look at this chart, we get a better idea of supply and demand. See, when demand is, when the price is high up here, then demand is not so great. But if the price goes down, then demand goes up. On the other hand, when the supply price is low, not many people want it. No, the supplier isn't willing to supply it, but when the price goes up, the supplier is well worth, well happy to supply it. Demand high, people want less of it. Sorry. Demand, the price is high, people want less. They demand less price low, people want more. Supply price high, willing to supply lots. Supply price low, willing to supply less. Excellent. So there are the two things. Price is elastic. Yeah, we can see from those two drawings. Now the firm. The theory of the firm equals a number of economic theories that describe the nature of a firm or, a, or the company or the corporation, including its existence, its behavior, structure, relationship in the market. Here's a picture of a, 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 the latest film by Tom Cruise, copyright to Paramount. In groups, I want you to go through and describe what, what you understand a firm to be. What does it do? Here's a book answer. Now, monopoly. Let's see if we can actually see what a monopoly is. Okay. Hi, I'm John Fu. Uh, uh, you want to know what a monopoly is? You do? Great, that makes me happy face inside. Okay, so, to get started, let's go look up the definition of the word monopoly by going to my best friend, Rich Uncle Pennybags. Penny bags would love to explain what a monopoly is. As defined by Google, a monopoly is a market in which there are many buyers but only one seller. Oh, that's an interesting fact, Uncle Penny bags. I did not know that. Could you explain further? Sure. A monopoly usually happens when a single company owns all or nearly all of the market for a given product or service. This would happen in the case that there is a barrier to entry into the industry. John, can you explain further what a blocked entry would mean? Sure, Uncle Pennybags. A blocked entry makes it nearly impossible for another company to enter a sector already dominated by a monopoly.
Some examples of monopolies include AT&T and Standard Oil Company. Why are monopolies bad? Less innovation and inflated prices. Example time. Let's say this man represents a consumer and this man represents a monopoly. When you look at the big picture, it looks like the consumer is getting screwed. Well that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video about monopolies. Okay, that's it. No more. Thanks. No more. Okay, there's an, uh, an explanation of what a monopoly is. Let's see how we get on. Now, the National Lottery is a monopoly. Only one firm, currently Camelot, is, a, is licensed by the government to operate a National Lottery in the United King Kingdom. Licenses also act as a barrier to entry on the railways. Only Virgin Trains is allowed to operate high-speed trains between London and Leeds and King's Cross. Sorry, Leeds and London King's Cross. Now if we go back there, we can see what licenses are. But I don't really think that you need to know what a license is. Let's go back. Patents. Now what are patents and how do they work? Let's see how we get on here. Okay, let's see if we can make How this do you know long. The value of a Great question. If you want to have a monopoly, a patent would be very valuable if it gives you the right to stop your competitors from knocking off your product. In that case, you can place a high value on your product. Patents can be analogous to a border you are creating. If the border is narrow, it will be easy to cross. <laughs> If the border is broad, it will be hard to cross. Broad patents are definitely preferable over narrow ones, because with a broad patent, the competition will use your help to cross the border. With a broad patent, it's like being a pole and a bridge collecting money to tax. Do I get a patent? The first step is for a patent attorney to prepare a patent application and file it with the Patent and Trademark Office in Washington. Now, if you look at this caveman, a patent application this caveman, is offered to the government he has a wheel. Benefit to society and the suggestion is in this movie that he's come along the to patent the wheel. The benefit being advancement of the state of the art. In this sense, it's like any other contract. The patent application must then be negotiated with the patent examiner. This negotiation process is called prosecution and can take you several years. What they're suggesting is that patents take a long time to get sorted out. After the prosecution is completed so let's and the say goodbye to this. The inventor has contract with the government. Right. Patents are protecting ideas that people have. What are they? A patent is a protection from a your idea. If you manage to patent something, then every time it's made, you get money. Let's move on. The firm. This video talks about how to start a marketing firm. All right, well, let's see how we get on. So, you want to start a marketing firm, do you? Welcome to the club. It seems like everybody suddenly is an expert on selling stuff. Hi, I'm Peggy Collins, and we're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about how to start a marketing firm. 
first and foremost, do not attempt to sell anything unless you and your firm are prepared to do so. And just saying you're a marketing firm doesn't mean that you are one. The key ingredient is experience in advertising, selling, research, and life. There isn't a single college graduate with a degree in marketing capable of starting a successful marketing business. So if you're young, wait until you have some practical experience before trying to tell a client what will work for them. All right, for the rest of you, I'm guessing you've had some experience in selling, advertising, research, or a related field. Good. Now surround yourself with people who are better at all these things than you are. If you can't immediately hire the five or six key people you'll need, establish a network of seasoned professionals who can be brought into the projects on a contract basis. Experts in art and design, copywriting, radio and television production, digital media, and website development. They'll all be involved in most of the projects you land. There are several websites out there that can hook you up with people who have years of experience in marketing and are willing to work for you over the internet. You don't even need an office at first, and unless you have a trust fund or an angel investor, the expense could kill you. Once you've assembled your team, build a really, really good website this will be your primary sales tool and must reflect your expertise in the medium of the 21st century. Then, work night and day for your first client, you. Nothing sells a marketing firm better than a great marketing strategy, outstanding creative and aggressive and confident account executives. That's just a couple of tips on how to start a marketing firm. I'm Peggy Collins, wishing you good luck and good business. Okay, so I hope this woman gave you some indication of how to start a marketing firm. Kebab shops. Now let's consider a kebab shops. There are many students. There are many kebab shops. A, ke a kebab is a fairly ordinary product. Kebabs from different shops are fairly similar prices are listed on boards inside the shop and are, are usually visible from the street so information information regarding the price is near perfect barriers to entry are fairly limited you need a shop a food license some pit of bread and some cheap meat all are easily available the market is not perfectly competitive, but its characteristics are nearly so. Therefore, we now know or can predict that the kebab market is not a fantastic business proposition. Let us now consider monopoly. What we want to know is how does competition work? Okay. Last week we looked at supply and demand. This week have we looked at these? Well we've looked at the firm, patents, monopoly, and we've looked at the issue of the kebab firm. We've also touched on license. I'm Jack Barnett. Thank you very much.